Welcome back guys, what's up? We haven't watched a Kurzgesagt video for a while. You can't see my eyes. So how about we watch some Kurzgesagt? I had a look through. There's actually a couple of videos we haven't watched. So if you're new around here, my name is Dylan. I uh, just put a PhD in physics on hold to create some fun things. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So we're gonna talk about space elevators today. And these things are in every sci-fi book ever written. It's hard to get to space. As much as we all wish there were an easy and affordable way- Never take a slingshot through customs. They will interrogate you. ...to see our planet floating in the dark. Right now, the only way is to become an astronaut or a billionaire. But there is a concept that might make it possible while serving as the starting point for the exploration of the universe, the space elevator. How exactly does it work? This should be a good one. There's also something that's quite related to a space elevator that I want to mention at, at some point, but not right now. Let's keep watching. Ooh, to understand a how a space elevator will get us into space, we I must do. first understand what an orbit is. Being in orbit basically means falling towards something, but moving fast enough to miss. If you throw a ball... Just like how you shot a, if you shot a cannonball fast enough, it would actually rotate around the planet it would go all the way around the planet earth it makes an arc through the air and then hits the ground in space gravity makes you move much the same way but if you move sideways fast enough the curvature of the earth makes the ground fall away beneath you as fast as gravity pulls you towards it i mean i feel like naturally all men have a bit of experience with this you know when you're in the backyard taking a leak you're making a parabola with that you know what i'm talking about you get the idea and don't tell me you haven't stood there you know changing the you know the the, the length of the parabola right <laughs> you, we men we know what's going on with those parabolas so to enter earth's orbit rockets have to go up i mean and i don't want to come across sexist at all uh, women could probably do it as well right i'm not really sure if women can do that but uh let's get our mind out of the gutter we're meant to be talking about science and serious stuff sideways fast by contrast, a space elevator taps into energy from the Earth's rotation to get the cargo going fast. Imagine a child spinning a toy on a rope with an ant on the child's hand. As the ant climbs out along the rope, it starts to move faster and faster as it ascends. Compared to rockets, with cargo launched on an elevator, you only need to provide the energy to go up. Fast sideways movement comes free with the Earth's rotation. But a space elevator would, without a doubt, be the single largest... <laughs> he's, he's right, but that's a complex explanation of what it really is. You're basically making a big rope to space. <laughs> and you just climb up there. ...the most expensive structure ever built by humans. So, is it worth it? It all comes down... The affiliate program, partner program referrals are now all live. You can earn 30% commission. You can get a free month just for referring a friend. So the real reason I dropped out of the PhD, if you're new around here, was to create a couple companies, one of which is this Cal VPN. It's the first post-quantum VPN in the world, also known as a quantum safe. It just has post-quantum cryptography. It's going to be really important going forward because powerful quantum computers are right around the corner. And the only thing that's going to stop them is quantum safe cryptography, as well as some a, a couple other things which are further off quickly you can refer a friend without signing up for the affiliate program or you can come here become a partner you come here you can have a read click here and then you'll be sent here you have to sign up again guys this is for good reason once you've signed up you get your own little ui for all the partners out there so you use these links down here you send them out to your friends once they sign up you guys get 30 percent commission as well as a free month for every person and so you've got all kinds of things around here you'll have to enter your paypal that's how you get paid out uh, every 30, 60 days, I can't quite remember right now. Uh, have a read, it's, a, it's around. So come join the cyberpunk revolution and uh, make some money. Help me market Cal. ...to costs. Rockets burn a huge amount of rocket fuel just to get a small amount of cargo into space. At current prices, it costs about $20,000 to put one kilogram of payload into space. That's 1.3... When was this six years ago? $40 million for the average human, $40 million for your car, billions for an international space station. This immense cost Ooh, is yeah. one of the major limit. I think at the moment, SpaceX per rocket launch, I think it's costing them about $100 million. That could be lower now. I know Elon is trying to get that way lower. Uh, I think at one point he, he mentioned he was trying to get it down to maybe even a million per launch. Uh I believe a million or 10 million. I don't know. 
it might be a million. Limitations of human spaceflight. Even with advancing technology, this cost isn't likely to be comparable with the price of an airline ticket anytime soon. A you space elevator would solve this problem. After construction, a space elevator is projected There's to... There's all kinds of new weird things people are thinking up. Have you heard of the spin... Is it called a spinatron? I can't remember what it's called. Spintronics or something? Now I'm thinking of uh, something completely different with electron spin. Uh, that that's called spintronics with magnons. Anyway, so there there's this thing where they spin things around really fast and then they launch it into orbit. It's a startup in the US. Uh, I'm not sure if they've demonstrated this yet, a proof of concept. So I don't think they plan to launch humans into space with this thing because the G's, you know, spinning around that before it gets launched would probably kill people, uh, definitely kill people. But I think that, you know, they're going to be launching in, you know, just like little things and for, you know, much less money. Reduce the cost 100 fold to $200 per kilogram. If an inexpensive space elevator costs $20 billion, then we'll recoup our losses after launching only 1,000 tons close to the weight of two international space stations. So what would a space elevator look like in real life? A space elevator has four major components. The tether, anchor, counterweight, and climber. The elevator part of the space elevator is the tether and the climber. It extends from the surface of the Earth to space. The climber is like a conventional elevator carriage, a chamber that works its way up and down the tether. At the base would be an anchor, pinning the tether to the Earth, along with a port for climbers. At the top is the counterweight, which holds up the tether. The tether is held tight like a rope and supported from above by the tension from the counterweight, located higher than 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. This is the bad version of it. At the counterweight could be a space station, a launching point for all missions from the spaceport elevator. But can we actually- It would have to be huge. So this cable would have to have a huge amount of mass, right? Like to stop it from falling, it's got to be balanced at the other end by a similar orbiting mass. Uh, and the entire elevator would then be supported by uh, centrifugal forces. So, you know, like for many years, physicists, science fiction writers, visionaries, you know, they've been calculating the sizes of these forces, uh, but they've all been pretty depressed when they realized we don't even have, we, there's no known material that's strong enough to cope with these forces. Not spider silk, not Kevlar, not even the strongest modern carbon fiber polymers to counter the weight. build one, it's hard to say. The biggest challenge is the tether. It needs to be light, affordable, and more stable than any material we can produce right now. There are promising materials like graphene and diamond nanoth. There are a couple materials, okay, that might be able to do it one day, such as carbon nanotubes. And we did figure out how to weave them and spin them in tricky ways kind of recently. So look, maybe that could be an option. But, you know, to make it as long as it's going to need to be, we're not sure if that's really feasible. This thing has got to, you know, extend beyond geosynchronous orbit some 42,000 kilometers up. There's that magic number. Even they may not be strong enough. And aside from being incredibly strong, the tether would also have to withstand atmospheric corrosion, radiation, and micrometeorite and debris impacts. Yeah, Additionally, point. it takes several days to climb the elevator. How do we power the climber? It requires a lot of energy to go up. Do we need a nuclear reactor on our elevator carriage? Our laser? And where do we get the raw materials for a 36,000 kilometer long tether? Do we make it on Earth and launch it into space, or do we make it in space and lower it down to the Earth? Could asteroid mining be the answer? Put simply, there are still some major technological hurdles to overcome. And a space elevator is not without risk. Should the tether break, it would collapse in spectacular style. If it breaks near the anchor, the force exerted by the counterweight will cause the entire elevator to rise up, ascending into space. Should it break near the counterweight, the tether will fall, wrapping around the world and whipping the end off. The resulting debris in orbit could pose serious problems to future spaceflight. If we build a space elevator on Earth, we have to do it right the first time. For these reasons, some That's experts have proposed first building a space before. elevator on the Moon. The Moon's gravity is much weaker than the Earth's, so a flimsier but existent material like Kevlar could serve as a tether. Even with all these challenges, the payoff of having a working space elevator would be immense. It might be the first step to truly becoming a spacefaring civilization. 
maybe we will never build a space elevator, but in trying to do so, we might learn an awful lot. And when it comes to the exploration of the universe, there can't be too many dreams of a glorious future. So let me tell you about that idea I mentioned, you know, dangling the elevator instead, space line, whatever you want to call, from the moon. The big difference is going to come from the centrifugal forces, right? Yeah, you know, the, the conventional space elevator would make a complete rotation every day, you know, in line with Earth's rotation, right? But the moon space line would orbit just once a month, and that's a much lower rate, which means there's going to be much lower forces. And so, you know, more than that as well, the forces are arranged differently. Um, you know, in extending from the moon to Earth, the, this space line thing, it's going to pass through a region of space where, you know, Earth's gravity, moon's gravity kind of cancel each other out. And this region is called a Lagrange point, right, where we parked JWST. That's going to be an important feature of this space line. You know, beneath this point, closer to Earth, gravity pulls this uh, cable towards our planet, right? And then above it, closer to the moon, gravity pulls the cable towards the lunar surface. And so that would be useful. And the best part of this is that we actually could build this today. We have the materials that could support this structure. And it would only cost in the billions. People have done the calculations. It only needs to be as thick as a pencil. And uh, this baby would be awesome. There's also not much debris in this area because our orbits through this little region are pretty chaotic. So, you know, you don't have to worry too much about meteorites and stuff like that. Imagine the experiments we could do at that Lagrange point. You know, like if you dropped a tool in Earth's orbit, it's it's gonna be moving away from you. <laughs> Whereas if you drop a tool at this point, this Lagrange point, it'll actually barely move. There's barely a, 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 a gravitational gradient. So, you know, I think we should build one of these things today. Just use Xylon, job done. It's obviously gonna be pretty hard, but uh, you know, let's, let's leave that to the engineers. In principle, it's possible. But anyway, that's enough for today, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.